Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is FIFA Expert, and today is the beginning of a series, a very special series that is quite different to something you've ever seen before on YouTube. It is the start of a player career mode, but honestly, I consider it a story mode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the story of Giovanni da Silva. Our story starts on July 11th, 2021. Barcelona has announced a new signing from River Plate, Giovanni da Silva, a very popular South American wonder kid that people classified as the next Messi. Although this transfer also came with a bit of controversy, fans felt it wasn't a good idea to make a signing so expensive, I mean considering it cost 20 million, but we'll talk more about that later. But yeah, they felt it wasn't a good idea to make such a signing during their financial crisis. And to make matters worse in the fans' point of view, they gave him the captain's armband immediately. All eyes were on Giovanni da Silva from the start. Every mistake was going to be talked about and every success would be underrated. The best demonstration, the best demonstration of this was the Real Sociedad game. The media treated it like the worst game of his career. But that's funny since considering it was only his first game that was actually televised and well known. From a fair point of view, it was a splendid performance. One goal and two assists. Now I know what you're thinking, isn't that a bit of foreshadowing? Aren't I ruining the gameplay in the background? I probably am, I probably am. But for season one, gameplay isn't really important. Season one, I am telling you an origin story, basically. As the match went on, from what you're watching, Giovanni da Silva would realize that Europe is very different to South America. Adaption would be key if he was going to stay on top of the world. I guess the thing we can take away from this game against Real Sociedad is you can't please everyone especially in the media. Now then, we've talked about that part. I don't know what you guys are going to call it, but I'll call it that part for now. How about we talk about his actual performance? Giovanni da Silva showed a very promising performance against Real Sociedad, putting in skills, sending in crosses. From the get-go, you could tell that Giovanni da Silva was a hard worker. But he wasn't the only important player in this story. You see the man that just scored that amazing header right now? That is Santos, Giovanni da Silva's best friend. In this match, it was actually the first time ever playing together. Even though they were both at River Plate once upon a time. But yeah, Santos got the Barcelona contract two years before Giovanni. And now they're playing together. To cap off a good first half, in my opinion, Barcelona led 2-1. Giovanni da Silva having a very good performance, but the media would say otherwise. I am telling you right now, the media tried to crucify this man, especially when Real Sociedad scored their second goal to equalize. I want you to actually rewind this. In 10 seconds and tell me what was wrong with that goal of course you'd say nothing was wrong but if you see Giovanni da Silva's positioning that was poor positioning to mark Oyazabal now Giovanni would try to make up for this by crossing a ball into the box for Pedri Pedri would head it in Giovanni da Silva proving once again that he is willing to get into those dangerous positions he is willing to take matters into his own hands to create opportunities for his teammates and usually this would lead to goals, especially in South America, but we'll see how it goes in Europe. So at this point, it's 3-2, 70th minute goal, Barcelona are looking like winning this game. But if you've been following the trend of this game, then I think everyone knows what's going to happen next. 85th minute, Real Sociedad, they score that equalizer. Mikel Marino to put them ahead. Maybe, well, not ahead, but put them on level terms and salvage a point. The media was not happy about Giovanni's performance as he was actually treated as the scapegoat. 
all the negative thoughts were set on him while his teammates got almost none of the hate. But I guess the story to learn from this match is you can't please anyone. We move on to the next significant game of his Barcelona career. The Bayern Munich game in the Champions League. Now everyone knows how important the Champions League is. It is the biggest competition in European football. That goes without saying. And if you want to win it, you gotta be really good. And Barcelona weren't looking like winning it this season, but fans got a dream, right? Heading into the Bayern game, his first Champions League game, Da Silva was on good form. Despite, however, despite this fact, however, there were still doubts that Da Silva could make it onto the big European stage. Fans wondered if he could actually handle the pressure of a Champions League debut. But honestly, I didn't think he did. The media didn't think he had it. But there is reason to this. I wouldn't have expected Giovanni da Silva to have a good performance against Bayern because it was his debut and it was against Bayern. Imagine having your first Champions League match against Bayern Munich. Even winning that match would be tough. Let's just say you'd have a better chance at getting a PS5 in 2021. And remember, at this point, the media didn't have a great relationship with Giovanni. Again, it was going to be a setup for failure. I'm not going to lie. The first half showed a bit of promise in the early stages. Giovanni was running down the wings. He was trying to create opportunities. But, but, it was dull and goalless. Giovanni was invisible after the 20th minute mark. But this is kind of understandable knowing that Alfonso Davies was marking him. Although it's not an excuse for him to squander the amount of chances that he did in that first half. Or at least, that's what the media thought. Bayern Munich also went performing to their best. Joshua Kimmich missing a very good opportunity to score a goal didn't help their chances. But, but, they were actually very threatening to Barcelona. Giovanni was also a bit threatening to Bayern, but, again, he just did not take the chances he needed to take. He tried to be creative, he even tried running into midfield, which showcases an important aspect of his playstyle, that he is willing to cut inside with the ball whenever he can. He had a pop on goal against Manuel Neuer, but it was straight at him. An easy save at the end of the day. At this point, Barcelona fans were very frustrated, seeing so many chances ending up into nothing. But Giovanni wasn't going to give up. He kept on creating runs, kept on asking for the ball, but sometimes he'd ask for the ball in very, very bad situations. At this point, the second half is almost over. Not the second, the first half is almost over. But Giovanni isn't giving up. He is making as many runs as possible. He is asking for the ball. Because he knows that if he can't do anything significant, then... The media will just dub him as a flop. He cuts in. He actually does some great skill, shows some great promise. But as soon as he goes too far away from the box, he actually loses the ball, gets tackled. That is the end of a dull first half. Probably the worst first half in football. But we'll move on to the second half. Because, well, we've got no other choice. This game needs a winner, and rest assured, it will get one. So you can rest assured that the second half had a few goals, from both teams in fact, but also Giovanni da Silva was actually playing a bit better than the first half. He was dribbling in the box, he was creating opportunities, although sometimes he felt he went in a little bit extra, he was still able to find the back of the net immediately from kickoff this is very good for his media outlook don't you think well not really Barcelona has to win the match before they can say that uh, he is a great player because in this universe 
that's just how the media is to Giovanni da Silva. But you can't take it you can't take away the fact that that was an immaculate strike. Probably one of the best strikes of his career. But then again, his career is kind of short. But yeah, first Champions League game, first goal. That is making everyone happy if it happens to them. But not the media. Although Bayern, they weren't gonna sit by and just let this game be a 1 0 for Barcelona. No, no, no. Thomas Muller had other ideas. And again, if you look at that defensive footage, if you really look attentively, Giovanni da Silva had another defensive fault. I know you might agree with me, but remember this one fact Giovanni isn't a defender. His main job is to score goals not to stop the team from conceding them. But then again, at this point, do you really think the media cared? Giovanni, all he had to do was just pick his head up and keep going. Danny Elvis puts in an amazing, amazing through ball to Memphis Depay. Santos takes the shot. Did you notice that Giovanni wasn't involved in that play at all? Exactly. That is the only play he wasn't involved in for the last two games. That's including La Liga, but you didn't watch those games because they weren't as important as this one. But yes, it's an, a good, it's an amazing strike. I can't even speak, but an amazing strike from Santos. And Giovanni da Silva, he felt that he wanted more, you know. Of course, that was a horrible skill move, but he didn't get more. And he knew that if he didn't get more, then the media wouldn't really be happy about him. But Barcelona did win this game. But why do you think that is? I honestly think that Giovanni da Silva was the main influence for the victory. But the newspapers didn't say Giovanni leads Barcelona to victory. No, no, no. The newspapers said dynamic duo. Santos and Giovanni led Barcelona to victory. And now, before you say that the media is a bit crazy, think about it for a second. Giovanni da Silva scored. That goal got cancelled out by Thomas Muller. Santos scored. And that proved to be the winner. And Giovanni da Silva was only involved in one goal. And that was his own goal. So, perhaps dynamic duo was the correct term for this game. But then again, I'm gonna make you feel like I'm taking you left and right and say that is wrong. Because, contrary to belief, Giovanni da Silva is actually a good captain. Didn't you notice how the first half ended nil no? Everyone was just all over the place. And then, after the half time break, Things just started clicking. That is Giovanni da Silva's influence as a captain. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is where I leave it off. But there's an announcement I gotta make at the end. So, I've just finished a video about FIFA. But this announcement isn't about FIFA. My friend has actually created his own YouTube channel. And from what I can tell, it's about vlogging. Him, uh, him and his group of friends have created a channel called The Smashing Boys RSA. Now, I don't usually do shoutouts for other YouTubers unless it's people I know. And unless I think they have potential. This guy has that. So consider watching his channel. And before you do that, why don't you hit the subscribe button? Remember, Smashing Boys RSA. Have a good one.